Assassin's Creed Unity is probably one of the most, if not the most, replayed game in the entire Assassin's Creed franchise. Yet a lot of people still don't have a specific style that they choose to play with or don't know how to narrow down a certain style when replaying this game. And I find that replaying the game with certain stipulations and restrictions can increase your immersion and enjoyment 10,000 times. So what I wanted to do today is basically run through one of the lore accurate ways that you could play Assassin's Creed Unity share some tips and tricks that I can give you to be a better player and be more in line with what I believe Arna would look like when actually completing these missions. Stick around, we're going to divide this video into three parts. One is, first of all, understanding who Arno is, because if we're going to play in a lore accurate way, we want to understand who Arno is as a character and what traits define him. Then we're going to look into the play style that you should adopt to be more lore accurate. And then we'll talk about any tools that you should use and any tools that you shouldn't use when you're playing. Because again, as I said, restricting your play style when you're replaying Assassin's Creed, whether it's through ghosting or self-imposing permadeath, or like we're going to do now, using more canon-friendly items, it's just one of the best ways to immerse yourself in a game that you've already experienced for the story. Step one, understanding Arno as a protagonist. Arno Victorian was born to an assassin father but he found his life upended after his father's murder when he was very young. He was adopted by a Templar family, and he later witnesses the death of that same adoptive father, setting him on a path of revenge and self-discovery in the Brotherhood. Arno is defined physically by his agility, his speed, and his incredible talent for parkour. He's probably one of the most talented parkourers, freerunners, I don't know what the fuck the, the term is, but he's probably one of the most talented people at parkour in the entire franchise. And psychologically, which is what I'm interested in, Arno is someone who's very accustomed to violence. He was born into the French Revolution, basically, which normalized the violence in the modern world in a way that no many other revolutions had. And at the same time, has experienced a lot of death and violence at a personal level, not just at, at a cultural level, with his father and his adopted father dying. So he's someone that's very comfortable with elimination-based stealth. A lot of assassins in the franchise, I believe, are more canon-friendly if you play them ghosting, for example, Altair. But Arno, even though you can ghost, I think would make a lot of sense that he actually spends his time eliminating and killing some of these guards. Especially when he's so driven and moved by justice and he sees what the extremists are doing within Paris. He's also someone who, again, is very impatient and very ambitious and a little bit of a show-off. And it bleeds into his charisma a lot of the time, but it also should bleed into the gameplay. So when we're going to be building the, the playstyle that you want to adopt to be more canon-friendly and lore-accurate, you want to focus on speed the idea of impatience coupled with performance. And this is what sets Arno apart from just being an impatient, unlikable prick, is the fact that he's actually good at what he does. No one likes to show off. Unless what they're showing off is dope as fuck. Fuck. That's true. If you're actually good at what you do, it kind of pays off to be a little bit arrogant and a little bit impatient. Let's take a look at some of the tools that you should use and some of the tools that you shouldn't. Again, this is just my opinion, and at the end of the day, you can play however you want. But these tools, I think, are designed specifically for Assassin's Creed Unity. They make sense for the character of Arno, and they make sense for the situations that you're often going to be in. To maintain integrity with Arno's character, there are certain gameplay actions that should be avoided. Firstly, being slow and waiting ages for a guard to be in the right place kind of contradicts Arno's dynamic and provocative nature. Instead, you want to move swiftly and decisively. Therefore, you want to avoid things that cause a lot of chaos and kind of create a lot of uncertainty around the situation. Things like berserk darts, which drive guards insane and cause them to fight each other. Things like poison bombs, which kind of scatter a crowd and make people kind of focus on the area of impact are things that you probably want to avoid if you want to keep a smooth and silent approach to most of your situations. And again, there are some exceptions to the not using these tools that I will talk about later on, but unless you're trying to be extremely advanced in terms of the tech that you use, try to avoid using berserk darts in the, in the conventional way, and I'm going to discuss an unconventional way to use berserk darts. Try to avoid things like poison bombs or also like guns because they're so loud you're probably going to be detected most of the time. For a lore accurate playthrough, you want to prioritize clean and efficient methods, which means using a silent projectile like the Phantom Blade for kind of long range assassinations. And when up close, you want to execute on low profile assassinations. There's a very specific reason why you have to do low profile assassinations. For those who don't know, there's two different ways you can assassinate a target in Assassin's Creed Unity. One way is low profile. And the second way is high profile where you're hitting the run button at the same time. The second animation is usually much cooler, much more verbose, much more stylish, but it takes a lot of frames and a lot of time for you to kill that person. It's also a very loud way of killing that person, which means you're either likely going to be detected if there are guards nearby, 
or you're going to take a long time. It's going to break the flow of what you're trying to do. So for the most part, I recommend you do low profile assassinations to be quick, just like Arno is supposed to be. And then the last assassination of a group of guards can be high profile for those style points. You want to use things like smoke bombs, not just to obscure yourself, which is how a lot of people do it, but to paint invisible areas where you can run through or run to that guards cannot detect. Smoke bombs are completely overpowered in Assassin's Creed Unity, and they kind of shut out that area from being detectable by guards, which means that if you're trying to cross a path between one column and another, or one place and another place, and there's guards that could see you run across that space from point A cover to point B cover, you can just paint that entire trajectory with smoke, run through it, and not have any problems. And this is going to allow you to maintain a lot of speed that you otherwise wouldn't be able to have because you'd have to wait for the guard to turn around or do whatever. Another thing you can do is throw smoke bombs to a guard that's very, very far away while you take care of guards that are in the, in the middle distance because smoke bombs last so long that you could throw a smoke bomb to the last guard in what's going to be your kill chain and kill the rest of the guards with another set of tools. So the most lore accurate ways to use tools, in my opinion, is using phantom blades, using smoke bombs, and trying to understand that you're using these things to aid you in movement and aid you in positioning rather than just obscuring yourself and protecting yourselves. Smoke bombs are invaluable for evasion and creating openings. Time them with your movements to escape or disorient multiple enemies, allowing for strategic repositioning. So those are the, the tools that you should use. The style that you should adopt is, is, is a fast one, and I want to use a very practical example now to show you how you can approach a situation in two different ways, one which is way more lore accurate than the other. First, we're going to look at how Arno waits patiently to kill some guards, has to wait for all of them to turn around, kind of shoots them from cover, and is essentially just a little bit slow and a little bit boring with how he does it. Don't get me wrong, being methodical can be lots of fun when you're playing a stealth game, but usually you want to be able to maintain speed and momentum when you're playing as Arno, just because it fits with his character so much and it fits with the game so much. One thing that I want to tell you is, is that it was a technique that was popularized by Leo K, who's an amazing uh, YouTuber that makes videos on lots of different stealth games. And he popularized the idea of equipping yourself with a Berserk Blade when you're running around to disable an enemy's SSI, which is basically their indicator that indicates how suspicious they are of you and whether they've detected you or not. The reason why is because when you want to play fast to be more lore accurate as, as Arno, you're likely going to be detected by some sort of guard, at least spotted by some sort of guard. And before they fully detect you and enter a combat stage, you can shoot a Berserk Blade to kind of cancel out that detection meter and reach them without any problems. And we're going to use that in this example to show you how you, you can approach the scenario in two different ways, one maintaining momentum and one not. In this first scenario, we're going to try and wait for all the guards to be where they have to be, kill them slowly, shoot from afar, and you're going to see how the tempo of the scene is completely broken. And in the second scenario, I'm going to use a combination of smoke bombs, berserk darts in a running pace, and high profile assassinations that maintain momentum to clear through that scene in a much faster and more stylish way. So there are three key rooms that we're going to look at during this example. In example one, we're basically going to have a very slow approach where we're waiting for the guards to be in the right position. As you can see here, this brute is walking within our, our line of sight, and the second that he is outside of it, we walk behind him, taking cover because once again, there's a guard that we have to make sure to wait for before we can kill anyone. We do a low profile cover assassination, which kind of looks pretty good, but doesn't really increase the momentum that we're looking for. A low profile assassination there and a high profile here. Moving on to the second room, we have to do the same thing. It's a rinse and repeat situation for a lot of the players in Assassin's Creed Unity. You wait behind cover until a guard is turning away, you move up and you kill him. We do it again here, take cover, the guards are facing away, so we close up on them and kill them. In the third room, we're basically going to do something pretty similar. And this is just to highlight how boring and unimmersive it can be if all you're doing is taking cover and waiting for these guards to do what they need to do. We're not using a lot of tools, even though we're going to use a Phantom Blade now. And for the most part, we're just kind of waiting for the guards to make themselves available to us. We're not creating opportunities. We're just waiting for something to happen that allows us to kill them in an easy way. Now, I want you to pay attention to how things are going to change in example two. We're going to break the example into three rooms. So you see exactly what I mean when I say that the opportunities that you create and the way that you use your tools to time your kills can increase the immersion factor and the spectacle factor of the game so much more. In room number one, we're going to use a smoke bomb to basically incapacitate two enemies that are far away from us, allowing us to be very fast in the way that we kill the first enemy and then reaching the other two. So as you see here, I throw a smoke bomb, 
kill this guy in a high profile assassination because I have the time and then lean into killing these two people. I use a mod to allow me to kill while I assassinate, which is great, but not necessary. You can do a lot of this stuff without the mod, which is called ACU fixes. In room two, where we waited to see how the guards turned around, I'm actually going to use a phantom blade to distract one of the guards by having him inspect the body, allowing me to take cover, and there's a reason why I'm going to take cover when I usually tell you not to. From cover, I'm going to use a quick shot assassination on the guard behind the investigating guard to then allow me to do a high profile running assassination from cover. There's two reasons why I'm doing this. One is because it looks really cool. And the second is because if you are in cover and do a cover assassination holding the high profile button, as we discussed earlier in this video, Arno kind of does a running kill of the guard that creates a lot of momentum and throws him into a running pace that keeps that fast pace and impatience that we're trying to maintain when trying to play in a more lore friendly way. Again, these two rooms, we've already used a lot of our tools and a lot of our surroundings to create opportunities to maintain that pace. And the third room that we're going to walk into, that philosophy is even more important. Remember how I told you that smoke bombs and berserk darts not only incapacitate guards, but a lot of the times buy you time? What we're going to do is deploy these tools in reverse order of duration to give us as much time to clear this scene as quickly as possible. That means that smoke bombs gives us the most time, therefore it's going to go first. Berserk darts buy us a lot of time disabling the enemy SSI, and that's going to go second. And with those two things, we're going to be able to clear this room incredibly fast. So pay attention to what we do here. We're going to throw a smoke bomb to the gunner, shoot a berserk dart at the brood at the end of the room because that's what's going to take longest to get to, and use that distraction to kill the other two guards that are out of my line of sight. So here we are, we throw the smoke bomb there, trigger a disguise just to buy some time and some insurance, and berserk that guard at the end. That allows us to kill these two guards with quite a lot of freedom, and that guy's still completely unable to detect me, allowing me to kill him and then quickly kill the gunner who was in the smoke. So those are basically the things that you have to consider, but I'm going to give you a little bit of an extra tip, which has to do with choosing outfits and choosing colors. Dressing the part is essential, because so much of Assassin's Creed is just the rule of cool, and no one's ever going to deny that. So to select outfits and colors that reflect Arno's stealthy and sophisticated nature is kind of a really good idea to immerse yourself. So don't wear bright green, don't wear bright red unless you want to, but usually because you're in the French Revolution, Darker shades and traditional assassin robes maintain the character's mystique and blend seamlessly into the environment. Now, I talked about some exceptions to the rule when it came to not using tools like the poison bomb and the berserk dart to cause fights. And that's because you always have to consider the probably greatest supporting castmate of the entire game, which is Paris itself. The French Revolution is a place that's filled with death, chaos, and complete conflict between three different groups, the, the rebels, the police and the extremists, which means that you can use poison bombs and berserk darts to leverage social situations to your advantage to sneak into places by causing distractions. There are a lot of places outside of individual buildings because most missions take place inside buildings at some point. When you're outside of that building, you can create a lot of distractions, which is something that Arna would do to create noise in the front of the house to then go through the back, or you can create a poison bomb kind of fest to kill as many guards as you can at once once you've gathered them in one place. These things do have their place because it makes complete sense to exist within such a chaotic period of time, but usually Arno when he's in, in interiors wants to be as unnoticed as possible, which means either you ghost and you avoid these, these enemies as much as you can, or you run through these rooms as quickly as you can, silently taking down as many enemies as you can. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you want to watch other ways that you can play in a lore accurate way any Assassin's Creed game, you can watch this video now.